In a previous video, we worked on how to get started with Python by installing Linux on an obsolete computer such as an old MacBook Pro or an old Windows computer. In this video, we're going to work on how to get started with Python using a virtual machine that you install on your daily driver computer. What you're gonna need are a few things. You're gonna need a computer with VirtualBox installed on it or maybe VMware. You're also going to need to make sure that you have at least four gigs of memory, 16 gigs of storage, two CPU cores for this virtual machine, which you'll be allocating when you set up the separate virtual machine for the Linux distro that we're going to be using, which is Pop! OS. I've never used Pop! OS before, so this is going to be a little adventure, if you will. We're just going to pretty much just work through the process of installing Pop! OS on this virtual machine and then getting started with Python from there. So let's get right into it. First things first, you want to install Pop! OS, right? So what you're gonna need to do is just go to google.com, our friend, type in Pop! OS download. And as you can see, I already went there, right? Click Pop! OS, click download. And if you see my computer hitching a little bit, is because I'm using TeamViewer to remote access a PC that I have with all of this stuff installed on it, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is just click this link right here. Also, you see right here, it says the recommended system requirements in order to use Pop! OS. It shows you the file size and it also shows you the SHA-256 sum. So this is pretty much just a hash of the ISO. And the reason why we have this here is to make sure that we check the integrity of the ISO image that we download. We wanna make sure that it is the correct ISO image from the makers of Pop! OS, which I believe is System76, right? So, I'll show you how to do that in a second. First, download Pop! OS to a folder that you can recognize. It's probably gonna be your downloads folder. And after you've done that, I don't know what my computer's doing. Go over to your terminal, and then you're going to type in SHA-256 sum minus B and you're gonna put your file name, right? That file name is going to be, I'm gonna show you how to do it if you are not really privy to copying all of that, right? So, also, by the way, you need to navigate to the correct directory. So this actually, this is actually going to help us, right? So first, let's navigate to the correct directory, right? You want to let's replace all of this, right? With CD, change directory, boom. That's the first thing you wanna do. Now, go back and you're gonna type in this, right? It's gonna type in SHA-256 sum minus B or dash B, and you're gonna type in the file name, right? Once you do that, it should check the hashing algorithm or it should calculate the hash of this file, and then we can compare it with the hash that Pop! OS gave us, right? So you see the hash right here? We have to check that against this. I don't know what's going on. It's dragging right now. So check it against this hash, right? Just copy it. And I'm gonna just throw it in right here. Boom, straightforward, right? And then you just look and compare the two hashes. I know for a fact that mine match because I already check it. So take some time 
to compare your hash, right? Now, if you're having issues navigating to the folder and doing all of that, I'm gonna show you an easier way to do that. Close out of that. Go to the folder where you have your files downloaded and go to open in terminal. And now you're right in the folder in which you want to check the hash of the file, right? And then you just do, you just run the same command that we had before. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's not, it's not rocket science, right? And again, this is a plus stuff. So you should be familiar with using Linux. You should be comfortable with using the command line, using basic commands like change directory, touch, nano vi which is to get into a nano and vi to get into text editors and touch creates a text document right so it created a hashing algorithm and we know again we got to compare we know that the integrity is intact right and again this is important because you want to make sure that your file or your version of the file wasn't compromised by something like a man in the middle attack or a bad actor looking to inject some malware into your file and then next thing you know you have <laughs> malware on your computer right so that's why we check the hashing of the iso that we download it's for security purposes right now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to virtual box right let's close this you know what all right we're gonna leave that head over to virtual box this is how we're gonna actually create our virtual machine not installing pop os yet we have to create a separate virtual machine a computer that's gonna be inside of our computer and then we're gonna allocate some resources to it and then we're gonna install the pop os image operating system to that mini that little mini computer right so we just gonna the first thing we can do is gonna go to type and we're gonna go to linux then we go go here and i believe pop os is an ubuntu it's based on ubuntu so we'll just go ahead and select that and then we just type in pop os and then click next. Ideally, I think you should use four gigs minimum, but I'm gonna go ahead and use eight gigs. I'm gonna go ahead and use eight gigs because I wanna make sure that this demonstration is running as smoothly as possible. But if four gigs works for you, go ahead, right? Click next, create virtual hard disk, VDI, click next dynamically allocated click next you can you can look up what all of those things are but for now those are just the straightforward settings that we're going to be using right and then let's put aside let's put aside 20 gigs of storage space then we're going to create right so we created our little virtual machine our little computer inside of a computer if you will now we have to install the image on top of it. And how we do that is simply double click. And then we're gonna go here. And then you see I already have Pop OS here because I previously installed it. But if you wanna find your image, click add, and it should be in your downloads folder or just navigate to whichever folder it's in, right? Then you click Pop OS, click open and then choose and then you click start it should be a very straightforward installation i don't know what it's doing why it expanded like that i need to figure out how to get an optimal screen size Let me see. I, I want to try something, but I'm going to wait till it finish installing. I'm going to go through the whole exercise first 
and then try to mess with it because one of my weak spots with using VirtualBox is figuring out the right screen size so that I can effectively use the virtual machine. I think I have to stretch the screen, but again, I wanna wait till it's finished installing. I don't wanna disturb it. Wow, so just like that, we have Pop OS, right? English, if you speak English, Choose English, right? If you speak English. I think this is the keyboard layout. Just choose default. Hit enter. Then do a clean install. I'm going to put in a simple password just for the purposes of this demonstration, but choose a strong password. Yes, encrypt the password and you have pop OS installed, right? So now we want to get started with Python. So we have to make sure that Python is installed and up to date. And how we do that is we simply open up our terminal. Python three, cause that's the current version that we're in. We're in Python three. Python is using version three, 3.10.4. So that is the most recent version and we're pretty much good to go to start coding in Python, right? And when I say coding, I mean a very, very, very simplistic way of coding or uh, topics of coding. We're just gonna use some basic print commands. So here we go. First things first, let's navigate to the drive that we're gonna be using and a simple straightforward way to do that is like this, close that out, go to your files. gonna go to documents and what I like to do is create a separate folder for Python so hit Python create and then open in terminal straightforward right so again all we did was let's close this all out went into files we're in our home folder documents we created a folder called Python, clicked into it, and then we opened a terminal in that folder. Right? Simple, straightforward, right? Now we're gonna use some basic Linux commands to create a Python document, right? So you use the touch command, name the file, touch python1.py enter now we're going to edit this file using the nano command nano python1.py now we're inside the file right let's put a little comment here uh test document <laughs> simple straightforward now we're going to create a code using some basic variables and a print command to print hello world and some basic math, right? So we are going to do hi equals hello world. Everybody loves typing hello world, significant meaning. And we're gonna do a math equation real quick we can do 50 plus 50 and then we're going to print that print high print the variable of high right and we're going to print 
answer, right? Now there's another way to do that, right? We can simply do this, right? We can do print and then um, good morning, right? And then we can do print and do a different math problem, 60 plus 60. And then we're good to go, right? Now we're gonna save this file by doing Control O, hit Enter, and then Control X to exit out. Now we want to run our Python script, right? Our <laughs> our very basic primitive code. And you do that by typing in Python three, Python one, dot pi so you're using python 3 the version that we're currently in and you're using you're entering your file name right that's the file name that we created and we added it right and then we're going to run it and there you go that's how to get started with python